Wow. So, uh, like, how was the first show? I thought it was really good. I heard you guys out there saying our oh, first five songs or someone was pitching. How, how, what's it like to start mm -hmm. tour now, today? Well, today with all the um, lighters out there, I felt like we were doing Aerosmith Dream On or something. I felt like, um, um, like Tom Aerosmith? Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> the bass player from Aerosmith. Have you have done stadiums anywhere before, like when you're in Europe or in Asia? Oh, yeah, we did a, a stadium. It was like 110,000 people in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. I can't find the source. And we had a mental breakdown on stage and played Seasons in the Sun. And we played Her Name is Rio and She Dances in the Sand by um, Duran Duran. Remember that time we did that mm -hmm. thing? That was a mess. That was, that was a lot of fun. Way. It was fun. It was great. Kurt, you sang Seasons in the Sun? Kurt rubbed his pee pee on did the I camera. Did I sing? Yes, I did. I don't. I don't know the words. But Play drums too. One of the only singles I can remember from my childhood that what's I used the, to cry to. What's the best lyric in, the, in that it's song? It's such though. an emotional song. It's like the best lyric. Goodbye, Papa. It's hard to die. But the stars on the beach were. I forget how it goes. But the stars on the beach were just. No, no. The starfish on the beach were the stars out of reach or something like that. Wow. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? The wow, really, man. Don't you get it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because all I know is that there's a better song on the B side of that single called Put the Bone Put In. The bone. <laughs> <laughs> it's Put about a guy's dog who gets hit by a car and they ask him to put the bone in the grave with the dog. Did <laughs> you see the new flip side of Gigi Allen's funeral in it? No. Yeah. He's like, he's sitting there. It's all bloated. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting there. Open casket? Yeah. yeah. And he's, oh. he's got a jock strap on that says, eat me. <laughs> and they're putting, they go, we, put a, we put a Walkman on Gigi's, Gigi's head so he can listen to some tunes on his way to the grave. <laughs> some what random shit. He probably had Nevermind on there. <laughs> so Dave, you're saying you're playing so all of a sudden. Song, silly boy. <laughs> <laughs> you look up and you see yourself on um, the big screen. Is that sort of like you stop and you look and go, oh, or how is that? I just kind of just felt like I was a fucking hockey player <laughs> <laughs> on a big screen with a Budweiser sign above it. I don't know, it was funny. I noticed that Reba McIntyre's playing here pretty soon. Oh. I saw that on the marquee. What was that? That's when you look to the sound man and he puts all this echo on your toms and you go, do, 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 do. And I was like, ah. well, see, what I was trying to do. But you guys weren't, weren't, didn't have enough ESP. Um, I was trying to get up, when I was standing on top of the PA speakers on those columns, I was trying to do a solo, like, a, you know, arena rock right. solo. It was the Led Zeppelin solo. Yeah. Did, did you notice it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh okay. I picked I up on that. Do, 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 do. I don't know how to play it, but. I picked no, up on that in God. Sao Paulo, and I started I doing do, 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 do. It was like totally I don't know. Awesome. What, what can you do when you're in that kind of situation, you know? I, I thought I'd. One last time, test the audience to see if I could jump into it, and I failed. It's not <laughs> working. It, it just, you know, and I and I stood there for a long time, and I know they couldn't read my mind, but I I was trying to like with my eyes trying to tell them, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm just, can't you tell? I mean, haven't you read enough bitching from us for the last year that we've we're not rock stars? You know, we're not trying to be. Although we did display a lot of rock star um, <laughs> things today. But One time I... Although yeah, we so are playing with you. I don't like guys <laughs> touching me. So Kurt, so when you... When you, you didn't really jump that hard. You just sort of like laid down into them. I mean, what happened to you? They immediately just started grabbing for me and trying to rip my flesh off for souvenirs. You know, oh, I have a piece of Kurt's forearm. <laughs> <laughs> Frame it. I don't know. So, like, you have an arrangement with, with like, your guys on the side of the stage and come lift me out. It looked like you were no. sort of playing while they're pulling on you and you're holding on to the guitar. Well, that's, I think that's a, a reaction from, from the people that work with us to try to save me, you know, when I do stupid things like that. They're never prepared for it. I just, it wasn't like before the show I said, I'm going to do that, you know. I was really, for a long time, obviously, I was contemplating whether I should do it or not, but. I just wanted to try to do, because it used to be so much fun in clubs, reminiscing about the old days, but, <laughs> you know, I used to be able to jump out in the audience, and then the audience would, like, carry me all the way to the back, and, like, like roll around all the way to the back, and it was really fun, and it was like a celebration, like, everyone's pulling, jumping, you know, throwing like up a big in the air and ball. everything, yeah, like a beach ball at an arena rock concert, but <laughs> these kids just, um, some of them, some of them just don't understand that. They're not used to that. So is all they know what how to do is to tear people apart. So.
not talking about clubs like the old days, but just the distance. I mean, it seems like I was I was looking. I think with the, from you to the audience is about fifteen feet. Does not it, quite that. Not that does does it feel distant? It does fi feel fifteen feet, but it's not really fifteen feet. It's about six feet. But what was your question? Look, <laughs> do you, do you notice? Does is, is there a trade off? You know, in playing an I mean, you're playing arenas. Obviously, it's a lot of people. You know, what are the? You know, I want to hear you talk about the difference in the, in the mind of the audience, how close you are from them, I and mean, can you see the people? You know, I mean, like, I, you can see the people who are catching up off the spill lights, but you know, 40 yards away, you know, 400 feet away. I mean, you have a sense of that. Is do you feel the energy? Is it great? Is it away? You know, what's that? Oh yeah, yeah, I can feel it. I, I can sense it, and cer at certain times when the house lights come on during certain parts of the song, I can see everyone, especially like, I think lithium's a good example because when we break into the distortion part, I, um, the lights turn on and I can see everybody jump up and down and, and I realize that it's not only just the front part that I can see, but the whole audience and it's great. It's, I mean, there's nothing better than, you know, that much of a capacity of people you know, in tune with, with, with the band and giving off that much energy. It's just like a little club, but a hundred times more. You know? They're singing good so, too. There are, there are times yeah, when... they always sing during lithium, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah, like or if that. they don't speak English, they go, hey! hey, hey. <laughs> that was English. No. Yeah, but I mean, in, like, if you're in Timbuktu or somewhere, Kathmandu. Are you guys, is this an arena tour? We're playing some Not theaters. Really. It says arena on uh, arena on a lot of the shows on the itinerary, but they're like five, six thousand seat places, they just say which that don't really constitute like for arena. Popular. Yeah, they just they just put arena down there so we feel better. Nine thirty club arena. There's some miniature. <laughs> yeah, like it, in Worcester, it's got like a miniature Madison Square Garden. It's about five thousand seats, but it's laid out like this. It's just shrunk. Did you guys think of, of playing smaller places? We did, and there was also like the reality of it too. It's like, well, we that's where we could we wanted to for sure. I mean, we were determined about a year and a half ago after getting off of, you know, the grueling tour that we had that we wanted to play. Well, first of all, we were we were going to put out a record that would completely, you know, ru you know, ruin our reputation, and only a few thousand people from every city would show up. You know, but that wasn't the case, and. And then we realized that because of the production costs yeah, and because we have to bring our own lights and our own PA and all that stuff, it costs a lot of money. And if we were to just play um, like venues and clubs and stuff, we'd, we'd be totally in the hole, you know. We're not nearly as rich as everyone thinks we are, so you have to try to play as big a place as you can if you're using this kind of production. I mean, we actually have a few, you know, we have a couple mannequins on stage, which nothing compared to a big inflatable monster you know you know or an eddie from iron maiden but <laughs> so is it, do you have like backups i said you know took some shots at the one what anatomical stuff usually isn't too cheap i was when you were smashing them well they can glue it back together yeah, yeah. It, comes together, it looks glued together back I guess. Right. You're, you're, you're talking about audience i mean you're i i seem to remember you guys talking at some point about you when you get an audience larger than a certain size you start attracting people that maybe isn't your audience. Remember the bass player in Jane's Addiction going off about it, Lollapalooza, there are always people you never want to play to yeah. coming to his shows. Is that something that comes up for you? Is that, you know, maybe that's an ugly question. And, well, uh, it is an ugly question, but <laughs> what kind of ugly answer can I give? I don't lie, no, but I just... Go ahead. It just seems like it's just like it doesn't, you just feed off of the crowd. It's live, you know, it's not like you're sitting there vindictive or something or like contemplative. Yeah. You're there because you're concentrating on the song and there's a lot of people there having fun and it's just kind of like a like a reciprocal thing I think know. the point that we're trying to put off in the beginning of when we were doing all those interviews when Nevermind was getting really popular was that we were really concerned with the people who wanted to come to see our shows and have a good time we were we were afraid that there would be these fringe mean type of people who don't really like the music, we just go to the shows to cause trouble. We didn't want that, you know? And we wouldn't, didn't want to have to have, like, security to, like, beat up on people to, to keep them in line and stuff. But since we've had the experience and since we've played a bunch of shows like this, there hasn't been any trouble. So we're relieved of that, of that kind of pressure. So that, that's the only concern that we really had, but it, it obviously um, translated into we hate our audience, you know, mm -hmm. which is 
bullshit. And there's a there's a know? meeting like before every show between our like road managers and the uh, um, security people, and they're saying like you mm -hmm. know some kid comes over the top, any anybody who gets too violent, you just you just grab a person and you just like set them down and you walk them over to the side. Yeah, we you don't see push any, them or kick them or any kind of nasty violence whatsoever because that just escalates and people see that and they get appalled. We see that, we get appalled. Just the whole show yeah, so we've been in plenty of spats. At the top of the show, it seemed pretty reasonable. They're saying like, if you come over once, they're gonna, you know, carry it inside. We had to, they were saying you can come over twice. Second time, or the second time, they would eject you. But, uh, a lot of times they don't have any control over that. The kids don't have any control over that. They're being pushed mm -hmm. over, you know. Uh, so it's not their fault. I, I've noticed like, in a lot of places, like especially like in England and a lot of those festivals in Europe, the bouncers seem to be. A lot more accommodating to kids. They're they're really cautious and in, in not being making sure that they're not really mean or you know abusive to the kids. But in in the states, we've we run into a lot of problems before. I mean, I've actually gotten in total fist fights with them before and like had to be saved by my manager and you know and stuff like that because it, it nothing. I can't think of anything worse. You know, there's nothing worse than seeing some kid getting beat up on just because he got pushed over the side, you know? Or it's just some violent meathead. Um, <clears throat> come back to the, the audience question, I wanted to go to a different angle. Uh, people also talked about selling out when you got big, the whole idea of that, you know, if a band, if you sell more than a certain number of records or something wrong, it doesn't seem to be following you anymore, is it? I mean, or do you hear that? Are people saying, oh, you've, you've done something in order to be commercially successful? It's, it's too far beyond that now. <laughs> I mean, it's it's been going on for so long. There's nothing we can do about it. That that issue doesn't even come up well, you anymore. Said, you said before, let's make a record to like you know, these weren't your words, but uh, to you know, blow away that audience. And the eight million people who, who bought our record, let's get rid of you know, I don't know, seven and a half million, whatever you're thinking. Yeah. You know, when, when you say that, what do you mean? Well, when I said that. Like I said, the main reason was to make sure that we could have a good time at live shows, you know, and uh, we just weren't comfortable with it at the time, you know, and now that now that it's been proven to us that there aren't any problems at shows, then it doesn't matter, you know, obviously the, the people are behaving themselves. Maybe the message got across to them somehow, maybe all that bitching and complaining that we did may have worked a little bit, you know. So you weren't so. talking about minded alienate or lose most of your I was in the beginning, about a year and a half ago. I was completely fed up with the whole thing. I didn't want to be a rock star at all. I, it was just, it was freaking me out, you know. But, um, I've had two years to recuperate. <laughs> yeah. You also hope you, like, transform somebody, too. Like, you know, if they see, you, if you're saying something, they might think about it and react to it. Now, when the camera isn't on you, you're quite animated and interested, so <laughs> how, how was the show for you tonight? I loved it. You, you look at you were bouncing around. I had a good time. Up. Are you the one who was hitting the head? Who got hit in the head with the stick pin? Not me. Me. How did someone get to that from back? I don't know. I got a bra. Whoa. My first bra. My first bra. <laughs> I got a Germs t-shirt. Someone's wearing a Germs t-shirt, are you That's serious? Cool. Wow. That's cool. That's, That's used, pretty cool. Yeah. It was used. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a lot of shoes coming over there. Yeah, what's with shoes? Who would throw their shoes? I don't know. And I, there's only one that comes up. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> they go home with hopping. The first time I thought it was people just losing them coming over. They were flying over and people were staying back there. The whole you other know shoes on the side of the road when you're driving. Like you see a shoe there. Oh, like, well, there's that other shoe. Should have picked up that other one there. This covers me for questions I want to ask about the tour. There's some other things I'd like to try and to see if they're not too taxing or, or stuff. Is there stuff about the tour of the show that you think we should talk about that we have? Uh, what do we talk about? Nicotine addiction. Nicotine addiction. So I mean, I'm a slave little, to the tobacco <laughs> industry. Or flush on the road. I mean, are you staying like in nice hotels? Do you like that? Would you rather be sleeping in a van? I mean, is that experience? Oh yeah, we no, we wouldn't rather be sleeping in a van. <laughs> I mean, we've done that. In we've done that for enough. years. Enough. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if we're still doing it, you know, fine. We'd still be doing it. But 
We um we made a point to sleep on the bus as much as possible because buses are kind of expensive. So we're not staying in hotels as much as we would normally, or a lot of other bands would. So. Yeah, one of these full decked out tour buses. Oh yeah, yeah, one of those typical. With an airbrush mural on the side. Well, you guys don't. There's nothing on the side of your bus. No. I remember, I remember, you know, I remember a few years ago, you know, when we were lugging around our own equipment in a van, you know, like five people cooped up in a van with our own equipment. We um, would see a band with a big buzz and go, man, what a bunch of gluttonous <laughs> bastards, you know, you know, what a waste. Those, those, those things must cost hundreds and thousands of dollars a day, you know. I went pissed on somebody's air like their air vent one time, this one band. I mean, <laughs> they they, they were. The I go, look at these rock stars. And I sit yeah, there and I pissed yeah. on it. Like, ah, 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 ah. We fired up But our a lot of that's band. just out of spite. And also, I looked into it. And um, if, okay, how do I explain this? If we were to stay in a hotel every night, let's say we stayed in a van, we, we drove in a van and stayed in a nice hotel every night, it would, it would equal out the same. If yeah. if we didn't rent, if we didn't rent a bus and stayed on the bus most of the time, so what's the difference, you know? Okay, I was talking to Chris about this before. I wanted to ask about why you released the album in vinyl and, and did that first. And kind of wonder, is that a vinyl thing? Is it a fidelity thing, or what is it about? Oh, we just love vinyl. I, I only still buy vinyl. The only CDs I own are CDs that have been given to me. I, I just love vinyl. It's just something. This I year, sacred to my heart. Um, this year, I got a linear, linear tracking turntable. It sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really good. Where was I with all these years without one? And it seems like there's this kind of like tone thing to, to vinyl. You listen to like old ZZ Top uh, records yeah, or whatever. The drums right. are really harsh. And now they remixed, all, like they reissued oh, all these yeah. ZZ Top records. All the records are like terrible. Yeah, they're backing some stuff up with digital samples. So I ask because we did a story early this year about, you know, some people always say, saying, you know, Yeah, that was a great story. story. I saw yeah, that. Yeah. That. It's, and it's, you yeah. use the Nirvana record as an example. Well, that what happened was <laughs> I, I was standing there and they're playing me these records that, are, that they're great mastered CDs and great pieces of vinyl. And I'm, and I'm hearing Eric Clapton this and that. I said, yeah, what would like smell that can spirit sound like on a system like that? I'll never hear that, you know? And the guy goes, no, well, actually, and that was, because I was a cynic, I was like, you're a bunch of old cranks, you're full of shit. And uh, there's just, there's just all sorts of, I'm not hearing some million dollar system, like, you know, you right. never hear this, but I thought, I said, I stood up and said, it's a different mix. And it was just tremendous, and I went on to other things, but that was what we talked about in a piece, with the needle drop. Because and you made a fool out of Dave Mustang. Dave, well, Mustang. Was Mustang. <laughs> it was Dave, hot though. What do you mean? Yeah. This <laughs> he like said his whole thing. speech, and then afterwards, the, the, you they basically said, "What an idiot." <laughs> I, I gave him a chance. I, I actually contacted him and said, "You know, we did this thing. We tried to do a before and after. So we before. He, he just, he just gonna take a swing at me. But there's like a technical reason why digital still isn't sound as good. It could sound better than vinyl, but it doesn't. Right. It's not done. Okay. Yeah. Um, One hit left. Uh, in Sestasa, well, I'm also like a Shun and Knight person. I do the Shun and Knight piece every year, and you guys have supported Shun and Knight. As you can see, I t shirts I talked about them in the, in the uh, liner notes on Incestasa. I mean, just for the next time I do a piece on them, I'd love to get a bite from you guys about like, why they're great and why people should pay attention to them if you still think. Oh, God. How do you explain something? As pure as that, I, I I really I'm lost for I'm at a loss for words when, when that subject comes up. When did you first? Because a uh, long time ago, long time ago, when their first cassette came out on K Records, um, maybe there's just something. You know, when we took them on tour with us in England, um, it, it was weird because obviously most of most of, probably 90 percent of the whole audience had never heard of them before. And instantly, they were just taken in by them. They just were, they're almost crying, you know. You could just see everyone just, like, completely fucking amazed by them, you know. And it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just something that you can't explain. It's something that's really, really sincere and good. That blah, 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 blah. You can't, no, can't put it in words. They're just really, really good. <laughs> they're going to come through in the fall the states we're trying to go yeah. again, but every time they do anything we put them on. Um, okay, now we're going to start getting one more serious question, two sillies. 
someone at the station is doing a piece on, on men wearing dresses in rock and roll this year, and uh, it, it mostly doing a RuPaul thing, but they asked me to ask you about why on stage would you choose to wear a dress? Mm, comfortable. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just Rolling Stones wore a dress. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing new. It's been going on for years and years and years, and I don't understand why it's such an issue still. But um, it seems like when bands do it now, even when we do it, it's it's so exhausted, you know. It's, I don't know. I personally like to wear dresses, and I wear them around the house sometimes, so... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> the one dress I own, you're... Courtney gave it to me 10 really? years ago. Well, she didn't give it to me. She left it at my house. She has good I taste kept it. dresses. Excellent. Norma Kamali. Oh, looks so good on me. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just a... It's, I think a lot of bands do it just to, you know, show their support for femininity, you know, the female gender. And uh, I, did it, I did it the first time when we played with the Chili Peppers and Pearl Jam when we went on that tour with them, you know, because at that time it was at the height of like freaking out about playing big places and and I I was certain you know I, I was convinced that a lot of people out there in the audience were a lot of macho people that would freak out over it so I thought it might create a little bit of controversy you know but I don't know if it did or not two last questions one um that's a heavy question. This is the second know? question is Frank Sinatra. I'll ask the second question first. Uh, we're having Frank Sinatra on the show, and we're asking people if they know who he is, Gary, who is, well, and he matters. Any, fan, any Frank Sinatra? You know what I like about Frank Sinatra? It was like back in the, in the 50s when um, Sammy Davis Jr. would show up at a hotel with, like, the, what were they called? The, the Rat Pack. The Rat Pack. And then they, the hotel people would be prejudiced. Like in Sammy Davis Jr. and Frank Sinatra, the big boss man would walk up there and say, hey, listen, Sammy stays here. And they'd be like, okay, Mr. Sinatra. So I just respected that about him. They didn't want to get their heads blown off. Or something. I, I've never heard of him. I only like Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, Harry, yeah. Well, you see. What else about Frank Sinatra that was good? Hmm. Sammy <laughs> Davis Jr. Uh, Did he do Shirley MacLaine? <laughs> <laughs> okay. In another life. In another <laughs> I have 60 seconds. Okay, two quick questions. One, the Heart Shaped Box video, uh, Christ of Injury Things, was that your, your idea, director's idea? I'm seeing a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me about it. Just, what's just your, some images. What's your interpretation? <laughs> just some images I've had in my mind for years. It's a kind of a way of uh, expressing our views on prejudice, you know. And I don't know. I just thought it was a, a bunch of neat images. You know? okay. I, I don't know. That's fine. I don't. I really don't know. Actually, we had this. This um, African American woman called up our management and was really concerned about it. She didn't understand. She she said, first of all, she started off the the, the call with like saying, I, I consider myself one of the only African American um, Nirvana fans. You know, I, I think of myself as one of the only you know real true Nirvana fans, and, and uh, I'm really disturbed about this. I don't know what they're trying to mean. You know, and what they're saying. And, and our manager had to like go on this big spiel about, no, no, don't worry about it. It's really. It's pro. Hey, this African American lives on my block. His name is Mike <laughs> Mbuizi or something like really? that. And he's from Nigeria. Mbuizi, that sounds He's really from Nigeria. Out. He's a genuine African American. Mm. So here, by I'm from Africa. Africa. Yeah, he's from Africa. Well, then he's an African. He's an African. He's an Afri <laughs> he's African American. He's I my thought the paper question was. Um, <laughs> Are you bored, Alex? Alex? Question: are, are you and Eddie better friends now? Have you always been friends? What's we we never band? we never had a fight ever. I just have always hated their band. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like you're friends or anything. No. Well, I mean, I I can consider him a person that I really like. I mean, we've had a few conversations on the phone. I, I really like him. I think he's a nice, really nice person. He's come over to yeah. my house a few times. And, and, and he's and he's doesn't take exception that you don't like his band. 
I don't think he really cares. I mean, I don't know. I, I can't say that now. I didn't like him a lot then when I was talking shit about him all the time, but now I can I can appreciate him, you know. I mean, I, I've, I've realized that, you know, the same people that like our band like their band, so why why create some kind of feud over something we just like to tour that, together. You know? Like Metallica and Guns N' Roses did a tour, we're going to have a Pearl Jam they're on a tour. When they did the, was they're doing out the, the final, the, the CD release, was that, I mean, is it just a good thing it's happening? It, it, to many people watching, people were Pearl Jam and Nirvana. Well, that was kind of a compromise. The label said, well, we're postponing your album. We're like, oh, no, we want our album out. And like one of their like uh, compromises was, well, we'll put the vinyl out. When, the way it was. So it was like, it wasn't really calculated. It was like, yeah. like vinyl love. Or I just feel sorry for the kids that have to decide on what they should buy within these next two months, either our record or our concert tickets or Pearl Jam's record, you know, that's a lot of money for kids to to shell out all of a sudden. I mean, I know I couldn't have afforded it when I was 15 or 16, you know? So I, I feel really bad about that. I wish we could have somehow, like, made a deal somehow. Like, we could have put our record out a little bit earlier and they could have made maybe spaced it out a little bit longer. You know? Like the Beatles and Rolling Stones, you say. Yeah. Well, Buy one, get one. Who's the Beatles and who's the Rolling Stones? Wouldn't that be hot? In our new, in our new I mean, magazine, I mean, I'm not blaming, Nirvana I'm not Pearl Jam. putting Pearl Jam down for putting the record out this soon or anything. It's not their fault, I'm sure, you know. But it's just, I just feel sorry for the kids that have to, you know. They got four out of four stars in USA Today. Rock. Whoa. Thank you. Hey, but you know, Jesus Lizard is playing. Really? Where? Where's Kennedy? Doesn't she I do this? Know, so clever. No, she doesn't do this. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you very much.